Have you ever wondered why so many food products have tamper seals on them? Until the 1980s, these seals were not a commonplace sight, but a number of high-profile product tampering cases forced companies to make their packaging tamper-proof in order to restore their customers' trust. In this video, I'm going to look at some of the most disturbing cases of product tampering ever recorded. I'll start with a case known as the vending machine killings. In 1985 in Japan, 12 people were killed and at least 35 hospitalized after drinking poisoned soft drinks. An unidentified assailant was leaving bottles inside the dispensing hatch of vending machines. When somebody bought something from the machine, they would find an extra bottle inside the hatch. Assuming they had got lucky and that the machine had dispensed an item by mistake, they would happily take the extra item and drink it. Unbeknownst to them, the drink had been laced with paraquat, a deadly herbicide. Paraquat can cause a very slow and painful death. A dose of around 2 teaspoons is enough to be lethal. Within a few hours of consuming it, people begin to feel very sick. The internal organs begin to shut down. First the liver and the kidneys fail, Finally, the heart and the lungs. It can take up to 30 agonizing days for someone to die of paraquat poisoning. The vending machine killer was able to get away with their crimes because paraquat was a common method of suicide at the time. After the police finally figured out what was happening, vending machines were labeled with warning signs and the killings seemed to stop. This wasn't the first time that Japanese vending machine drinks were poisoned. In 1977, at least four people died after drinking Coca-Cola that had been laced with cyanide. In Tokyo, some years after the paraquat poisoning, vending machine drinks were found to have been laced with lime sulfur. The motive behind these poisonings remains unclear. Most product tampering cases seem to be done for revenge or blackmail, but the vending machine killer appears to have done it just for the thrill. In all of these vending machine poison cases, nobody was ever caught, and they still remain at large today. There was another high-profile product tampering case in Japan. In 1984, a terrorist group known as the Monster with 21 Faces placed boxes of candy filled with cyanide on store shelves. 21 packets of poisoned candy were found. They had all been labelled with a warning sticker which read, Danger contains toxins. In this case, the aim was not to kill indiscriminately, but to cause panic among consumers and to extort money from the companies which produced the candy. As with the vending machine poisoners, nobody involved was ever caught and the case remains unsolved to this day. This case comes from England. Rodney Wicello was a former Scotland Yard detective who thought that he could get away with the perfect crime. In the 1980s, he began a blackmail campaign against the Pedigree Dog Food Company. He injected cans of dog food with poison and placed them on shelves in stores around England. He sent one of the contaminated tins to the company's director, demanding £500,000 or he would continue to poison their products. When his demands were not met, he decided he needed a more serious target and he started to contaminate jars of baby food. In 1989, he attempted to blackmail the Heinz company for £1 million. He mixed broken glass, razor blades and caustic soda into jars of baby food and placed them on supermarket shelves. This caused a major panic nationwide as worried parents rushed their children to hospital suspecting them of having eaten contaminated baby food. Luckily, a lot of these cases turned out to be parents being overcautious or people falsely trying to get compensation money. But a number of these cases actually were genuine. One boy was hospitalised after swallowing chunks of broken glass from a jar of strawberry yoghurt. Only two jars of contaminated baby food were actually recovered from supermarket shelves, but it was enough for Heinz to recall over £30 million of stock. Rodney Wicello used his police training to get away with his crimes, but he was eventually caught as he attempted to withdraw money from a cash machine. He was sentenced to 17 years in jail, but he is now back on the streets. Luckily these days, jars of baby food are tamper-proof. I remember hearing about this case back in the early 90s, and it was also said that he'd put caustic soda into bottles of washing up liquid so that people would suffer from horrible burns when they tried to wash their dishes. 
I can't find any reference to this today, so maybe it was just something made up by the tabloids at the time, I'm not too sure. In 2003, an alarming number of poisonings occurred across Italy. Victims were rushed to hospital, suffering from severe internal burns to their stomach and esophagus. They had all drank from the same product, a bottle of water. At least 20 cases were reported in different places across the country. Police found that someone had injected bleach, acetone or ammonia into the bottles through the top of the cap. The pinprick hole was too small to be noticed by most people, and the toxic substance was invisible once it was mixed with the water. The sheer amount of poisonings, and the large distances between each one, led police to believe that this was the work of an organised gang. So far, nobody has been caught, and the motive for these crimes has not been discovered. In 1984, a consumer panic swept the United States, when boxes of Girl Scout cookies were found to have been contaminated with needles and other sharp metal objects. Reports came in from 15 different states across the country. People were buying seemingly unopened boxes of cookies, only to find a nasty surprise when they bit into them. A nine-year-old boy was rushed to hospital after a needle went into his gum after eating one of the cookies. One mother broke a cookie in half to share with her son and found two pieces of thin metal inside. A police investigation found that metal objects had been inserted into the cookies after the boxes had been sealed. The needles were thin enough to be pushed through the outside of the packaging and into the cookies without being detected. As with a lot of these product tampering cases, the perpetrators have never been found. Perhaps the most famous case is that of the Tylenol poisonings of 1982. In the Chicago area, a number of people died after consuming a capsule of the painkiller Tylenol. Later analysis found that the pills had been laced with cyanide. Johnson & Johnson recalled millions of dollars worth of Tylenol and police issued warnings for people not to take the drug, but the damage had already been done. Seven people died from taking contaminated Tylenol, including a 12-year-old girl and three members of the same family. This also gave rise to a number of similar crimes across America. All across the country, people were being rushed to hospital after consuming tainted painkillers. Rat poison and bleach were among the contaminants used by copycat criminals. Once again, nobody was ever caught, and the reason why over-the-counter medicine is so heavily sealed today is directly because of these incidents. There are also a number of dubious cases of product tampering. Those stories which may have an element of truth, but most likely they fall into the category of urban legend. The first is the legend of the LSD-laced temporary tattoos. The story has been going round since at least the 70s. Apparently crazed hippies are going round putting doses of LSD into temporary tattoos. The drug is then absorbed either when the victim licks the tattoo to wet it or when they place it onto their skin. There have been a number of flyers circulated over the years warning parents on which tattoos to look out for. Usually it's a Mickey Mouse or a Bart Simpson tattoo. Quite why hippies would waste expensive LSD on spiking a few kids is beyond me, but the rumour persists to this day. According to Snopes, the stories are untrue, but I did find this news article from 2016 claiming that police had recovered a bag full of LSD-laced temporary tattoos from an elementary school in Indiana. Apparently one pupil found the bag and decided to apply one of the tattoos, but soon began to feel funny and was rushed to hospital. This time the tattoos were of Dora the Explorer and Spongebob Squarepants, rather than Mickey and Bart, but otherwise the article is very similar to the urban legends. Another dubious story is the numerous incidents of people claiming to have found used needles inside cans of Pepsi. These stories reached their peak in 1993, after various news outlets ran stories about people finding syringes in their drinks. It seems that most of these reports were made falsely by people hoping to sue the company for millions in compensation. At least 52 reports were made in one year, but I don't think a single one has actually been confirmed. There was a case in 1990, in Ontario, when a shop owner found a syringe poking out of his can of Pepsi. It was suspected to be the work of a disgruntled employee. But this was just one incident. An organised campaign of inserting needles into Pepsi products seems unlikely. Perhaps the most well-known product tampering urban legend comes up every single year. The tale of razor blades in Halloween candy. Now, there have been a small number of isolated cases of people finding sharp metal objects in Halloween candy. 
most of these have turned out to be hoaxes. In the year 2000, Minneapolis man James Joseph Smith handed out Snickers bars which he had stuck needles into. Only one boy was injured and James Joseph Smith was swiftly caught and jailed. Given the rarity of these incidents, the chances of finding a razor blade in your trick-or-treat bag is probably very low. Even so, parents still warn their children to check their candy very carefully before eating it. So there's some sinister cases of product tampering. Whilst some may just be urban legends, other cases are definitely true. Modern packaging may have a lot more safeguards today, but it's never completely foolproof. The scary thing about these cases is how easy it seems to be to get away with it. Only a small handful of people have ever been charged with product tampering. The vast majority seem to have got away with it completely. So be careful next time you buy something, especially if you get a free item from a vending machine, or if your box of cookies seems to have a weird hole in the side. How often do you really check the tamper seals on a product before you took in? So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, please check out my Patreon page. Last month I finally got a Patreon supporter, so shout out to James. Thank you for being my first ever patron. As a reward you can have this delicious bottle of orange juice. Yum yum. Until next time, goodbye.